Hello there, Lies of P fans. Welcome back to my channel. It has been a long journey with Lies of P, and I can understand why people are having a hard time with this game. It's very challenging, but it's so rewarding, and it's a lot of fun. I'm having a great time with this. I'm on my third playthrough, trying to work to get my platinum trophy, which it's very thought-provoking because I have to make certain decisions to be able to get that trophy. And I'm like, uh, do I really want to make it? Because I like the fact that I'm able to make my character more human and some of the routes I have to take would mean I will not be so human and I'll be more like a puppet. That's why this game relies heavily on what choices you make, the lies basically you're able to make. But first of all, let me show you my stats and get you a better acquainted with what I've actually built over here. I built a very much balanced character. This is why in the beginning of the game, it's so important that you pick the right build according to, I guess, your skill level and which route you want to go with. Because if you want to cultivate a technique build or a strength build, it actually matters which route you pick but of course when you first start this game you don't know what route you're gonna take you don't even know what weapon is good for you or anything like that so i want to just show you this as you can see my stats are pretty balanced like literally i didn't put too much into vitality i've seen people this is my third playthrough so this is why you see my vitality at 50. As you can see, I don't even have my vigor up that much because you don't need much of it. That's your stamina, by the way. If you have the right stuff, like the amulets, let me show you the amulets here. What up? Where are the amulets? See? When you get this amulet right here, it increases your stamina of recovery. This is all you'll never, ever, ever need on your first playthrough along with this here, which the carrier amulet you get on when you hit the moonlight path. I think that's where you get it with that shovel puppet that poops flames and everything. It, it gives you this. And this is important because this is the issue why I keep talking about the capacity and the weight of items everything you see on here has a weight limit and when you get the special amulets they run super heavy look at that 13.6 right there versus 9.3 the arm of god is another special amulet and you're not going to even get that until you defeat uh simon madness i call him but when even the ones that you do have access to, this is pointless to get, but at the same time, the weapon alternative is just too much. I don't recommend that for new players. I think it's like this... I, I think I've collected all the weapons here, so let me see if it's in inventory. Nope, I didn't even put it in here. It's a big juggernaut of a sword. There are other spe special weapons, like the two dragon swords, which you can get used to the parry of this, but it's kind of like, it's a little bit difficult to handle. This is an end game weapon. This is pretty decent. It actually does a range attack. Same with this one, the puppet ripper. You get this upon beating. You can get this after you beat the king of puppets, AKA Romeo. And you can get this weapon with Alidoro, or you can get the freaking I don't- I don't remember what amulet is associated with this. All I know, this is the best weapon I use. It is the Trident of the Covenant. I amp this shit up before anything else. This one does the job. Its one-handed attacks are amazing, and it complements well with my shield. Okay, back to... What was I doing? Okay, this is the lost train of thought that I really hate about myself. P organ. The P organ is important. It, your entire skill really relies on what you put first into your P organ here. This is your so-called skill tree. Just so you know, even if you don't fill these things up fully, you're going to still have access 
to the skills that you put into this tree. The only thing you won't have access to, like for instance this, I started filling it up but I didn't even put in another slot for this. I still have access, I am utilizing these skills and everything. The only thing I don't get until I fill this slot is the additional added belt slot to whatever. Did I even add my third belt slot? Let me see. Oh, I did. I guess I kind of like, because I like the per the guard and the attacks and the charge attacks from my legion arm. The abilities, basically. This is why I'm going to this thing so I can show you the different options. <clears throat> so, attack types. So when you're first two phases, that's what you're going to end up having access to after you defeat the scrapped watchman, if you can get to that point. I'm going to teach you how to get to that point at some point of this video. <coughs> you want to automatically start adding stuff into things that are actually important. Like over here, increase ergo upon eliminating an enemy. That's important because if you go into one of the five best farming spots in the game, which in the beginning of the game as you're playing is Crot City Hall. When you get to that point, you're going to have a lot of ergo available to you and the you'll be able to learn perfect guard with those enemies before you re enter the arena of the Scratch Watch... Scrapped Watchmen. I was about to call him the Scratch Watchman. I'm like, he kind of does scratch you up a little bit like a cat. I would avoid all these other types of things, at least through those sections. Another important thing you want to put is because if you're... Okay, don't worry about the Legion arm yet until you get the proper Legion arm. And the one I'm going to recommend is towards the, the end of the video. <clears throat> so I would focus on reducing stamina. Especially with dashes, because to do dash attacks and not actually eat away at your stamina is freaking amazing. You can do dash charge attacks, all of that good stuff. At some point, you're going to get stupid options in each phases. Some of them are good. The only one that actually is amazing is in phase 5, and that's auto charge your legion arm. At that point... Oh, you're you're going to be getting used to your legion arm and you're going to rely heavily on that to be able to get through each level and boss. But in terms of survival type, this is important right here. Enhanced pulse cell recovery is pretty okay, but I would avoid using a put if you're going to use your quartz, use something that's going to benefit you to get th through certain areas, especially through the Mullum District, until you get access to the go gold coin fruit tree where you're able to restat all of your stuff, your P-organ, your, your leveling, even your legion arm. <clears throat> so you want to lower damage while dodging. I wouldn't focus on enhancing fatal attack per, uh, pulse cell charge. Lower damage when discharge is dumb. As you can see, I haven't clicked any of that. I did click guard regain, but that wasn't through my first playthrough. I've restatted this thing so many dang times. Lower damage of charge attack, fable attack. You will have access to that to phase two. I will let you decide on that. But the one that I actually picked first was enhance attribute resistance because this thing you realize you're going to go up against enemies that can deal a lot of different attribute damages like electrical, overheating, especially when you're going up against the Flame King. Oh my god, he just poops fire all over the place. Enhanced special resistance, that's the disruption damage, so you have more resistance against that. You're going to have that issue the time you hit the Opera House area, so... Be mindful of what you put into quartz first. Increase pulse cells 3 when you have access to phase 3. Just keep in mind, just upgrade what you think you need first and then you're going to gain access to the next phases of these things and you'll be able to even increase the amount of pulse cells you have in your inventory and that's important. As you can see, I put enhance my attribute resistance too. I didn't care. Well, at some point, I did start clicking on this, but mostly it's always about increasing pulse cell count, enhancing my attribute resistance, 
lower damage while dodging, enhanced special resistance, attack types. I never, I didn't start worrying about this until I had enough quartz to be able to worry about it. So increased stagger duration is important. If the stagger window is too short, you're going to miss your opportunity to do a fatal attack. So don't worry about enhancing the stagger attack, enhance the fatal attack or fable arts attack until later when you start gathering enough quartz to actually worry about it. So <clears throat> don't worry about perfect guard destruction because if you're like me who don't get that perfect guard often, this is pointless. So pick something that is going to help you get through your first section of the area or through your entire playthrough. Enhanced Condensed Legion Arm attack. When you get the right Legion Arm, meaning the shield, by the way, and you enhance that, then it's going to matter. But otherwise, this is stupid. Enhanced Charge Stagger attack. It's not worth it until you have enough quartz available for you. By the way, I think per playthrough, it's about 28, maybe. 28 quartz available. So you have 28 quartzes once you find them to choose what is going to help you to get through the playthrough meaning help you defeat Luxazia help you uh, defeat Simon Madness and help you defeat the nameless puppet because you want to have what that puppet can give you which is the the hatred amulet and Forget about the proof of humanity. Don't get that on your first playthrough, by the way. Um, as you can see, I still haven't even enhanced my weapon attacks on discharge. This is... A lot of these things are so dumb. What's important is stagger duration. I even found it a little bit better to enhance my stagger attack from behind. But these are things... I restatted all of this towards the end of the game. So... As you, what you can see here, what I've checked upon are actually more important than the other ones that I haven't checked. And this is even on my third playthrough. If you stat your characters correctly, which I'm going to mention in parts of the video about it, you're going to get by pretty easy peasy and not have so much issues. I am a non-skilled gamer and I still was able to get through this only because I understood because I played Bloodborne, I beat Bloodborne, I understand how to stat, level my character, cultivate a build, so I'm gonna teach you this, so hopefully you enjoy and get something from this. Alright peeps, we're at the beginning of a new game slot that I just opened up just for you so I can show you what you need to pick as a new gamer or someone who's entering this world, this new Souls-like world. So you're going to have three options. Yes, I know. So there's three paths that you're going to choose one. One is going to be the path to the Cricket, which is a balance build. There's the path to the Bastards, which I did play in the demo. I'm not a fan of dexterity builds, by the way. Path of the Sweeper, which is a strength build, but I want to show you what each stat gives you. So first of all, you look at the Path of the Bastard and you're like, okay, I like these stats. I got like a uh, weight limit that's a lot higher. Physical attack is a little bit higher as well. Uh, physical defense is a bit higher, not too much. Vitality is 11. And of course, Vitality and the Balance build is 9. Vigor is 7. Vigor is a 5 over here, which is already start. It's a turn off. Capacity is a little bit higher in the Bastard build. But, you know, this is pretty balanced. The Path of the Cricket is always going to be a lot more fulfilling as a new player because all of these stats matter, actually. So... I'm going to pick it for you. I would want you to choose the Path of the Cricket. All of my playthrough slots, I've picked the Path of the Cricket because you can go either route at this point. It just doesn't matter what weapon you're given. The Saber is perfectly fine to get you through the first section of this game until you reach the first merchant. And then you'll have the option to buy the other weapons like the Rapier or the great sword and everything so just start off with this one this is my recommendation for you you don't have to choose it 
but this is the better thing to actually build upon and you can get used to the different weapons once you're able to purchase the other two and then you'll be able to understand the game a little bit better so this is the first thing I'm going to start off with and I'm going to do a little run through to get you to the first boss and show you a little bit of tips and tricks on how to get past that as well. We are now at the first uh, so-called side boss destination that actually matters. You have to defeat this dude to get to Hello Hotel Krat. Your best friend, which is the wandering merchant at this moment, is this dude. Is going to sell you some blitz here. So you only get to carry three at a time, all of these. Hold up. Okay, there you go. And I'm going to purchase the great sword because I want to try something different. Of course, I got rid of everything to be able to upgrade my character a little bit. But I'm going to use this real quick and see what it does for me. So currently I got my stats leveled to this. I gave myself a little extra vitality. Another thing I wanted to point out in terms of stat leveling is like you want to be careful on what you pick to level up. If you want that additional fire resistance, you're going to have to be sure that you pick motivity, technique. If you pick vigor and everything, it doesn't really bring anything up except your stamina. This actually, when you bring up your vitality, it brings up your fire resistance, electric blix resistance, and also physical damage reduction. Same with this, when you bring up your motivity or your technique and everything, it brings up your damage resistance to fire, electric, and acid. So that's why it's important that some people don't understand that. They start automatically just start throwing everything into a slot and not keeping in mind, I'm like, is your reduction being brought up as well? I know motivity and technique is both, it's gonna bring up the damage to my weapon. This doesn't bring up any damage to weapon, but it brings up your resistance to fire, electric, acid, disruption, shock, break, which you don't necessarily need that right now. So just hold off on it. But it does bring up your, your abilities for your legion arm, but we don't even have the best legion arm right now. So I'm just gonna bring up uh, my weapon damage. And I don't think I really need much else. So, let's go. Level it up. Let's go in my inventory here. I got some stuff. So, I'm going to make my first weapon this. And then I'm going to bring... Yeah, that's fine. I'll put that as my secondary weapon. I don't have any amulets yet. Uh, first thing you get is a Workshop Union Lightweight Frame. Which brings up your physical damage reduction rate. They equip that. Nothing yet for these guys, but you're going to be okay. This is just a dumb legion arm because who the hell wants to punch their way through life here? So, in terms, like I said, for the extra bag, look at this. You want to put some stuff in here because you're going to have access to it a lot quicker. And also, I'm going to move this because I'm not going to necessarily need the grinder all too much. So, I'm going to put the throwing cells there. And over time, you're going to get stuff to put into this. Oh, by the way, there's the instantly repairs weapon durability right here if you're on the need for it. So I'm going to put it right over here. I'm going to try to memorize that where I put things. I'm not going to use the thermite cell. I'm going to save that because I know I'm going to need it later on in life. So just start collecting them because you're not going to have access to them all in district merchant until later on so now let's go up against the puppet parade master over here oh oh Ah. 
Yeah, uh, I'm just running away. All right, let's do this. Notice how I'm constantly circling him. Yep. That's actually how you defeat these bosses. Oh, that's set up. That's okay. He's got a perfect guard there. Got a fatal attack on him. Ooh. Notice how I get too greedy and what I pay for it I big doing? time. Patience is key to winning this battle, so don't rush it. Alright, I got him. Well, people, I hope you know that the new upgrade has made things significantly easier now. No you get access to two more quartz in Paladina's shop. It's going to be available for you the moment you hit Hotel Crot. And of course, because I already went past the Malm District and got access to the coin fruit tree, this is a good opportunity to show you how to stat your character. Okay, I'm gonna reset my levels. Of course, I've done it a few times, so it's costing me six gold coin fruit to do it. First of all, uh, on your first playthrough, don't try to put everything in vitality. Let me show you, at a certain point, you know, you just don't want to put so much into it and you want to put more into your your at least motivity or the technique summon your advance i wouldn't make your vigor go past 20 at this point but let me just show you you just don't want to put it up there for me at the level i'm at i don't need to have it so high because when you have that amulet that recharges your stamina quicker you're not going to need to put hardly anything into vigor the highest i even with my other build was 20 because at a certain point i don't know people that enter this game realize this i do because i played bloodborne there's what you call a soft cap and a hard cap the soft cap is where you reach that certain barrier where it starts losing any like significant change like really amps up your character that's uh, when you reach the soft cap and everything everything before that point you're getting a lot for for your ergo but everything past that soft cap which i believe the soft cap for certain things is about 30 i believe and then i started seeing dwindling as i started upgrading more and everything the only one that you don't really receive a soft cap or a hard cap for is capacity that's because this game really heavily relies on you being able to switch your frames up meaning your your damage reduction things that protect you against attacks and all these attributes like the fire acid overheating all that stuff disruption all of that is going to impact you so i don't remember what build i was doing for this one but definitely as you notice if you put too much into advance you're not getting any defense like physical damage reduction meaning you're gonna any regular physical attack you're not gonna have the extra buff for it but definitely in advance look how much um resistance i'm getting against fire and electric blitz acid disruption which once you reach the opera house you're gonna get hit with disruption attacks a lot and they kill you instantly if you don't have the the consumable to be able to help protect you against that including shock and break you're gonna experience that also later on in the game as well 
I'm gonna bring up my motivity a little bit because in the beginning I did pick the path of the cricket, a balance build. Your some of your weapons actually do well with a balance build. I'm starting to know notice that with the trident. Like when I keep motivity and technique pretty balanced. It works out great. So if it, but I can't move on any further without actually discussing about the weapon options we have in this game. It's a very significant amount. Let me show you how much weapons we have to deal with here. And I have double of everything because this is my third playthrough. Look at that. Bramble Curve Sword. <laughs> Police baton, which you get in Krat City in the first phases of the game. This thing is pretty awesome, by the way, on its own. But the handle is a lot better because the attack it does is pretty good. This one's another one, the Fire Axe, which is pretty decent. This one you get midway in the game, the Master Chef. You get that with the crumbling collapsed uh, train station. There is the Murder Dagger. This is the one that is ideal with cultivating first when you're doing your first playthrough. This thing deals a lot of damage on puppets, especially if you put some uh, ergo into an advance and everything. You don't even need to bring it up a whole lot because when you activate the electrical attack on this, it is going to fight up against all sorts of puppets, including the king of puppets himself. I defeated him with just this thing. At some point, I did get this, the circular electric train saw, and this thing, whoo, this took down the king of puppets too right there. But if you don't have this, any one of these weapons and changing up the handles can work for you. Just have to add the electrical blitz to it and you'll be able to get through a lot of the main puppets in this game, meaning Romeo. Let me see. Does some acid attacks. Lose. That's pretty dang good. Does a pull. Yeah. Oh. What is that? What else is there? There's a lot of weapons to choose from and the best part is you can switch it. Like, this is important. These are just normal weapons, by the way. You can I amp up you. your normal weapon and be like, woo! Okay, assemble weapon. So you can do a lot of combinations with these guys. Like. I put this one on this handle. I put that handle on that handle. I'm like, okay, why? what am I doing? So literally you can switch shit up. What actually brings up the damage is the blade, but the handles are the one that actually does most of the other works for you to have that as a separate option. And of course you can alter the handles based on the build you're creating. If you want to keep your build pretty balanced, don't alter it at all. Otherwise, you have to get the balance crank for this, which you can purchase as well. Or you can get from the butterflies. But definitely, you can be creative and do different handles for all of this. So I recommend just creating your own weapon or utilizing one of the special weapons because they are great too. This is why I'm like, this is my go-to right here, the trident. It will help you. It, this... Thing has helped me through a lot of awful situations and then there were cases where I won a, an entire boss fight which is the freaking what you call the crystal spear if I can find it yeah this thing right here I amp that crap up and this is what I used against Simon Madness through my first playthrough which I thought was ridiculous this is not even a heavy set weapon but I was able to win with this, the specter and some throwables. The other thing I want to mention that is extremely important in this game is the Legion arm that you pick on your first playthrough. If you pick the wrong one, it, it can affect your gameplay quite a bit. When I learned 
that the Legion Shield does this much. It's freaking amazing. So I'm going to show you. So through your first playthrough, you're going to have to get your first Legion plug. And when you get that first Legion fl plug, forget all of this. Like, even though you're able to get the Flameberg after defeating uh, the King of Flames, just save all of your Legion plugs and don't bother even amping up your puppet string as well. Because the only thing that actually matters with this uh, Legion arm is its attack link. And it's not enough to get you through your first playthrough. This is just mostly fun. I know in my videos, I'm simultaneously using the puppet string and the shield. But majority of the time, I am using the shield. So automatically just go and create the shield for yourself. Save your Legion Calibers, which you're going to start collecting them through your playthrough, especially at the Vanini Works factory. When you go up against that juggernaut of a shield dong, I don't know what it is. He's going to give you your first Legion plug. Just start saving them and then upgrade your shield. The guard attack on this is freaking amazing. The guard parry on this is awesome. And the, even the karma charge attack, if you're able to land one, it does amazing damage, especially if you upgrade your P organ to where your legion arm attack is increased. Phenomenal. Forget the falcon eye. On your second, third playthrough, then you can start, you know, upgrading all of this. But I haven't even used this at all. Even on my first playthrough, I had a hard time with this thing. It just wasn't doing the damage that I needed it to do to get through the games. I was better off just buying throwables, collecting throwables, and using the shield. And not even using the puppet string. Only because this is my third playthrough, I created all these arms. Because at some point, it's like, I might as well do it. I think it's a part of the process to create all of them anyway, to get the trophy for it. But this one is the dumbest of it all. I will never use it. You're better off just gaining the weapon that does a whole, like, uh, acid pool versus this. This is even dumber. Some people get this so they can be more creative with their gameplay and have a little bit more fun. But that's about it. This one, even though it does a lot of flame damage, and you can use it on certain enemies, especially the green monster of the Baron Swamp, still you're better off with the shield. You will survive better with the shield. Just get the throwables from the Mullum District, meaning the Thermite cells, and use the shield in congruent with summoning the specter. And you're gonna you're gonna get through that boss pretty easily, especially if you upgrade your capacity and keep yourself light. You're going to breeze through this like in a heartbeat. You're gonna be like, how in the world did I even consider this game challenging in the first place? All right, peeps, I'm gonna end this video here. I hope everything I mentioned was able to help you in some form of way because I understand how challenging this game can be if you don't understand the mechanics, what to do, what is the best weapon, what is the best build, understanding soft caps and hard caps, understanding the P organ. I know it sounds horrible talking about the P organ, but it does matter what you upgrade on your skill tree. And as well, you know, there's plenty of other things to actually explore in this game. I want people to make it through their first playthrough because then they can go to this lovely record machine and actually admire all the records you collect. You don't start collecting these gold records until your second playthrough. And then you have to go through a second playthrough so you can interact with Eugenie to get this other record which is the proposal of the flower wolf part one i know she get, gives the far east uh, princess on another dialogue but it's important to go through each round so many times plus the time you hit your third playthrough you're going to start realizing like i said in the beginning of the video you are going to become practically immortal and you're going to have fun assembling your weapons and altering the handles to fit your build you're going to breeze through so many bosses in here and you're going to be like, 
what in the world just happened? They did so many good upgrades to this game that is able to help you get through each level and get through your first playthrough. Like like I said before, like Paladina, now you can buy two quarts to be able to upgrade yourself. They gave you that important dodge ability that comes with most FromSoft games as a default now. So there's really not much excuses to not beat this game if you're able to just understand that you're going to have to use the specter you're going to have to use throwables and everything like that to get through each game you're going to be fine there's no reason you should spend four or seven hours on a boss anymore because everything is available to you to actually become successful in this game defeat it get to your next playthrough and really enjoy what this game offers its uh players i'm like I've been playing this game for almost two months now and I am addicted to it. It's a challenging but it's a rewarding game. Like I feel like I have become a skilled gamer in a way even though I'm not. So I want people to experience this game and enjoy all of that and that feeling of accomplishing something. So don't let people shame you into utilizing all the resources given to you. Use the uh, uh, the Legion shield here. Even if I'm, I, I practically just see myself as a Spartan at this point because all I am wielding is the freaking trident and this shield in every battle. And I use the grindstones associated with each enemy that I face. And I'm having a I'm having a good old time. And this is the feeling I want people to experience with this game. And I believe you can get there. Just don't get so frustrated. Use everything. Stat your uh, character correctly. And believe me, you'll get through every section and you'll be like, yo! But either way, I'm going to end this. And you all have a good morning, a good afternoon, and a good evening. And thank you for watching. PlayStation.